one of the guys that I worked with called me and I was still laying in bed. And uh, he said, turn on the TV. And I said, all right, what channel? He said, it doesn't matter, just turn on the TV. I saw it was one of the World Trade Centers. It was a few minutes later that I saw the, the second plane hit. And I told him, I said, hey man, I, I don't think I'm coming to work today. I, I think we're gonna be heading to New York. I was an assistant chief for fire operations for Santa Fe County Fire, and I got a page. Um, that page was, we need you to come into the warehouse. We're getting ready to go out the door. And it was uh, very sobering, very worrying, worrying for the, the safety of, of the people on the task force and wondering if I'd make it back if I went. I guess the, the toughest part for me was knowing that some incredible human beings had, had died. These were, these were some of the finest of both NYPD and Fire Department New York, as well as civilians who, you know, were some of the cream of the crop in the business industry in this country and, and the people that took care of that building. And um, mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, um, that has a huge effect on us. <laughs> I don't like to talk about it too much. I mean, I, I really don't. Um, and, and it's not, not because I uh, am so emotional that I can't, and it's not because I don't want to remember, because I do. Uh, it's like yesterday to me. I mean, we're talking 20 years. It's not 20 years to me, it was yesterday. It's very vivid. Uh, but the deepest emotion I have is the one that uh, we were prepared and we were there and we could help. The USAR uh, organizations across the United States were from earthquakes and, and building collapse that was caused by natural uh, disasters. Dr. Bennett started Texas A&M Task Force One because of what he saw at the Murrah Building in Oklahoma City. The evolution of uh, Texas Task Force One uh, really began as a state team, a team for the state of Texas. Uh, so I started working with our rescue people here at the training program and we reached out across the state to top rescue experts and brought these firefighters uh, together. And we put together a search and rescue team based on federal guidelines of what are the uh, positions, responsibility, and training necessary. And our first major federal deployment, uh, unfortunately, but our first one was to the World Trade Center. They passed out our federal uniforms for the first time. We'd had the state gray BDUs. Well, these were, were blue BDUs. And I never will forget this because they, they passed those out and to a man and woman in that room, you couldn't hear a word. Everybody was, was just staring at the American flag, every single person in that room. It was probably one of the most powerful things I remember. It was so visually overwhelming. It was huge, it was just massive. The destruction level, massive. Um, the, there was still active fire uh, down in the bowels of those buildings. And it really resonated to me that, that if I tried to look at this as this massive scene, that's overwhelming. But if you take it into smaller pieces and realize that you have small achievable bits to do, then it makes it something that you can actually accomplish. I don't think when we joined this team and started back in 97, we ever thought anything like 9-11, whether it be the Pentagon or the World Trade Center was in the realm of possibilities. Even though we planned for events like that, we didn't plan for the cause, we planned for the outcome. And so, you know, as, as a young firefighter, I wanted to be wherever the action was. If there was a fire on the other side of town, I wanted to do anything I could to get to the other side of town so that I could fight fire. That was my job. That's what I wanted to do. And I think the draw to this task force being part of Texas A&M University was the fact that we were gonna get the best training on the planet. 
we were gonna get the best equipment and the latest break-in equipment on the planet because of the engineering extension capabilities that we have to learn and develop new technologies. And we were gonna be taken care of when we went. And I think those were the three most important things to us. There's 20 members that are still on Texas A&M Task Force One that were, that were at the World Trade Center. Some of them were probably third or fourth year firefighters at their department. Almost every single one of those is a senior leader on our team right now. They bring that expertise, they bring that passion, they bring that drive. They, they bring the fact that they're striving to do a better job on every single uh, incident that they go out on, and that's infectious. We learned that it worked. Everything worked. The, the high angle skills of cutting the metal worked. Working with the torches, moving things out, hand signals back and forth with crane operators so they knew what we wanted and what they needed to do. To work as a team, to fit into other people's teams, it worked. When you're part of a team that has high standards, everybody on that team knows that there's high standards. And that basically brings the standard of the team um, along with, with those leaders. So we came back with the confidence that we knew what to do. Obviously we came back with anguish and hurt and all those emotions, but as a team, we were a team and we knew we were a team. We, we, had, we had moved to a new level. I have a, a favorite thing that I listen for when people introduce themselves uh, during kind of uh, question and answer sessions with, with the members of, of Texas A&M Task Force One, because inevitably somebody will say, hi, my name's so-and-so and I've been with the team since inception. Well, That's a long time to be doing what we do. And they're all really proud of being able to do that.